In the United States, we are facing more urban deer issues than ever before because of an imbalance of natural systems in our cities. As deer populations grow, wildlife habitat within our communities quickly becomes degraded. When people see sick or emaciated deer, they start feeding them, thinking it's a solution. But that often makes the situation worse. Overabundant deer cause problems like vehicle collisions, landscape damage, disease outbreaks, and impact native habitat that affect other wildlife too. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department can provide advice and permits, but communities will decide what actions to take and are responsible for any associated costs. It will take months, maybe even years, to get stakeholders to agree on goals and solutions because with hundreds in a community, there are hundreds of opinions. To avoid conflict, communication and transparency is key. Remember to be realistic about what to expect and that ultimately reducing deer herds requires combining multiple strategies. Feeding bans are the single most effective strategy at reducing deer conflicts. They are written and enforced at the municipal level. They prevent feeding, which deters concentrating deer and helps reduce vehicle collisions and disease transmission. Texas offers two types of permits to trap deer. The permittee, such as the city, county, or property owners association, is responsible for hiring a trapper and conducting all trapping operations. The trap, transport, and transplant permit, also known as a triple T, authorizes deer to be moved to other properties with sufficient habitat. This is a challenge because even rural areas have too many deer, so finding a release site can be difficult. Before deer can be moved with a Triple T permit, some deer must be tested for chronic wasting disease, which requires a few deer to be killed unless samples can be collected from nearby roadkill. With a Trap, Transport, and Process Permit, or TTP, deer are trapped and euthanized and the meat is donated to local food banks. Each of these trapping options can cost 300 to 800 per deer. Both permit applications must be signed by a city, county, or property owner's association representative. Homeowners associations are not eligible to apply for these permits by themselves. Hunting has been used to manage populations for decades and in some urban situations is still a viable option. Urban archery deer hunts can be conducted or cities can hire a contractor to manage a hunting or sharpshooting program. This strategy can cost $200 to $400 per deer. The average fence doesn't keep deer out of an area since deer can jump a six-foot fence. However, homeowners can put up eight-foot fencing or add an attractive two-foot barrier to an existing six-foot fence if allowed by their HOA. In addition, fencing around a subdivision may be a costly solution, but it is extremely effective when used with other management options. Sterilization or contraception for deer is not permissible in Texas by state law. There is no legally approved drug in Texas for fertility control of deer. Therefore, this is not an option. Chemical repellents don't work and can often harm wildlife and the environment. They are not recommended. Human activities have led to current deer situations. We clear valuable habitat, replace it with sterile turf grass, no longer use hunting to control wildlife populations, are intolerant of important predators, and then feed wildlife, thinking it's a solution. Controlling deer herds is complicated and a long-term process. No one tactic works for every community, and multiple simultaneous strategies are recommended. It may take a few years to see results, and management actions must continue to keep herds reduced in size. Leaders must engage the community, be transparent, and communicate openly about decisions. However, more importantly, the community has to be willing to be part of the solution.